Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Seth Tomboli. I'm a pastor at the GLR campus. You're currently sitting with me in the leather shop, Tomboli Leather Shop. And uh, man, I'm gonna talk a little bit today with you about heaven and hell. I know that's kind of a curveball. Um, not as much about hell. We'll save that for later in the series, but we're talking about eternity. Maybe you've got questions about eternity. I wanna address a few of those today. How to live with an eternal perspective, how to live with the end in mind. I love how Genesis 1 starts. In verse 1, it says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says he spoke uh, light, darkness, sky, land, uh, water, vegetation, stars, the sun, the moon, the, the water animals, the land animals, all this he spoke into existence. And then he created you with his hands and me. He created man and woman in his image. And so he created at the very beginning a place that we would inhabit. And then at the very end, he created the people that would inhabit that place. And then he said, it's very good. Now I'm a simple guy, okay? When someone asks me a question, I try to give a very basic, simple answer. And so when I think of heaven, I think of the things that won't be in heaven, okay? I'm not a negative, like pessimistic person, but I think about the fact that there will not be calories in heaven. Can I get an amen, okay? There will not be cavities, right? There's no, there's no doctor appointments. There's no dentist appointments. I've got one tomorrow and I'm not really looking forward to it. There's not going to be commercials and family drama and taxes and mortgage payments or regrets. There's not going to be any wrinkles, okay? It says we get a glorified body. I'm just assuming that we're getting like a six pack. I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that. But you need to know that there's not going to be sin and there's not going to be temptation. And, and what you need to know is that all those things, yes, they're not going to be there. But I want to ask you, do you, do you plan on being there? Have you chosen Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of your life? Are you following him with your life? It's a, it's a question that's a pretty bold question, but it has to be addressed starting off this series of devotionals that we're about to dive into. I want to tell you, when you get to heaven, you're in the presence of a God that is loving and he is so incredible. He created you. He knows everything about you. And he's the one that called us to repentance. I love what Revelation 21 says. It says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. John 14, it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you may also be where I am. You know the place or you know the way to the place where I'm going. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And he says, this is how he answered, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. Now, from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Y'all, I believe in heaven, everything is amplified. If you look through scripture, look at what John wrote about it. Um, it, it was undescribable. Like think of 4K and 8K here. All of your senses are, are heightened and amplified. Your vision, your hearing, the colors, the sounds. It, it's crazy. It's like watching a good movie trailer when John talks about heaven and we read about heaven, but we don't know the ending. We don't know all the details. That's what I think about when I think about heaven. And when I, when I think about the sound and the worship, y'all, we're blessed with incredible worship at our church. We've got Heather Hoyt and Tracy and, and Brandon Shatswell and, and Wesley. I think of all them combined like times a thousand, and that's the sound of heaven. It's amazing. It's incredible. And, and some people think that heaven is just one long church service. And I personally, I don't believe that is the case. Jesus in, in scripture, he was comforting Lazarus. And 
or he was comforting, comforting the sisters of Lazarus after he had just passed away or what they thought about uh, that he passed away. Jesus said to her, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? I wanna ask you, do you believe this? Do you believe that when you, when you put your faith and your trust and you believe in Jesus, that you will never die? There's another life after this. For believers, we get to inherit eternal life in heaven. This life is not all that there is. There is life after death. And I was thinking about an example on a plane. I've never been upgraded to first class. Maybe you have, I'm very envious and jealous of you. But think about sitting in economy seating, which is where, you know, us peasants sit. And then you get upgraded to first class. And then when you get to first class, they upgrade you to the, like you're in the captain's seat. You're sitting with the person who's driving the plane. They're flying the plane. And then you're like, man, I miss being back there in economy seating. Like no one says that no one's going to get to heaven one day and say, I just really miss being around all the sin, being around all the brokenness, all of the craziness, all of the temptation. No, when we get to heaven, we're not looking behind us. We're looking at the very God who created us. That's going to be a very special day. The best is ahead of you as a believer. First Timothy 6, verse 6 through 7, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. Maybe you've heard this, that the only thing that you take with you to heaven is souls. So what does that mean? The life that you live, the words that you speak right now, today, tomorrow, the day after that, those things are impacting someone's life. You get an opportunity to influence and impact people's lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, that's going to have an eternal impact on their life. It's about souls. I had a mentor of mine, a good friend of mine. He always used to walk around saying, it's all about souls, souls. And he would really stretch out the end of that word. And it just stuck with me. But that's what it's about. We don't take things to heaven with us. It's souls. I love it. I'm going to end with this verse, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with what? Perseverance. The race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Recently, I found myself sitting with a guy who had just given his life to Christ. We were walking through scripture. We were praying. I was teaching him about fasting and, and how to really spend time and hear from God. And, and, and he was asking hard questions. I was digging in the word and praying and trying to find an answer for him. And I got home and it was just such a special moment for me. And I was talking to my wife and I was like, Kendra, I just had such a good time talking with this guy. And I was just in the word and I was asking questions. And, and I felt the Holy Spirit sp just speak to me so clearly. And he was like, you, do you remember when you and me used to do that? Do you remember when you would bring your questions to me and I would have you get into the word? And do you remember when you would spend time with me? And the reason I, I'm sharing this story with you is because I think so often we have these big elaborate questions, but maybe we're going to the wrong place in asking them. I want to encourage you as we go through this series, don't listen to another man's opinion or another woman's opinion. Go to the word of God. Don't even just listen to what I'm saying right now. I hope you would listen to it, but go to the word of God. Ask the spirit of God to speak to you, to show you what to read, to show you where to go, to find answers for your questions. And I just want to remind you, it is all about souls. The, the life you're living right now, live with an eternal perspective with the end in mind, thinking about heaven. And that's what we're doing right here on earth. I want to pray for you if that's okay. God, I thank you for this time with whoever's watching this video right now. God, would you bless them? Would you speak to them? 
In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys.